Hi, I'm Diana with Girl Scouts Western Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you today about making homemade yeast rolls. Don't be intimidated. It's so simple and so much fun to make, and really doesn't take long at all. So I'm gonna go through the ingredients that we need to make that happen. Then we'll mix them up, make them rise, and we'll have some homemade bread in no time. So the ingredients that you're going to need for this recipe are two tablespoons of shortening, three tablespoons of sugar, a cup of very hot water, a package of dry yeast. Yeast normally comes in packages of three like this, and you're just gonna use one package of that. An egg that you're gonna beat before you put it in the mixture, a teaspoon of salt, and two and a fourth cups of flour. I also like to use Pam, and I'll explain that in just a moment. You're gonna need a couple of bowls. You're gonna want a small bowl to mix up your egg and your salt in as a mixture together. Then you're gonna want a larger bowl that you're going to put your, start off with the first ingredients. You're gonna put your hot water, your shortening, and your yeast in there together. Mix them up and you're gonna let that yeast start working a little bit. Once that's happened, then you're gonna add some other ingredients and we'll move on with that. I always spray my bowls with Pam before I start. This is a very sticky dough and it just makes the process easier. Glass bowls are preferred if you have those. If you don't, you can still make it, but that's the best. So let's start mixing. Okay, our next step, we have an egg that's been beaten and we have our salt. We're gonna mix the two together. Just whisk them up a little bit. Then we're gonna bring back our mixture that has the yeast and the water and the shortening in it, and we're gonna pour the egg mixture in there. Mix that up again. Then I've got the flour here. Do not dump all of that flour in there at one time. Just take a little bit at a time, maybe a third of it, and start mixing. I really find that a fork works best when you're mixing this until you get toward the end and it gets really thick. You can start to smell the yeast doing what it does to make the yeast rolls. So I'm gonna add a little more. This is such a simple recipe. It only makes six to eight yeast rolls, which isn't a lot. I'm a firm believer though in not doubling recipes. I would make it twice if I wanted to have more. So as you can see, the dough's getting thicker and that's the flour causing that to happen. And it's okay that it's a little lumpy. That's not the issue. One more batch of flour. Now remember this bowl that I'm mixing in, I sprayed it with Pam before I started. That way it would not be quite as sticky. This is a very sticky dough. It's not anything that we're gonna roll out on a board and we're not going to um, knead it or anything like that. It does its own thing. It's kind of a make your own. I think wearing a black shirt wasn't the best option. All right, so I'm almost at the end. So I'm gonna trade over to a rubber spatula Now it's looking like dough is supposed to look. Very sticky, tacky, and you don't want to add more flour. You don't want to put it out on a board of flour. This is what it's supposed to look like. Very sticky and tacky. Now, here's my second bowl. It's best to use a glass bowl if you can. This is a Fiesta Ware, so it's type of a glass bowl. I'm gonna take the dough I'm just gonna dump it down into this bowl. Now, you can see about what we've got. This bowl is maybe a third of the way full. What I'm gonna do now, this may seem weird, but this works for me. It's the way my mom did it. I've had my oven preheating at about 200 degrees. I'm gonna take this bowl because for yeast and rolls and homemade bread to rise correctly, they need to be in a warm spot. Leaving it on the counter isn't best. So I'm gonna take the bowl, I leave my oven door open 
so it's not baking the the um, dough. It's just going to keep it warm on the door like this. So as you can see, I've got it back here on the door. The towel on top of it is just laid loosely. You don't want to tuck it under because the dough needs to rise. This dough needs to rise twice in size. It's got to double in size. So I'm gonna come back and check it in about 45 minutes to an hour. We'll see if it's doubled in size. If it hasn't, I'll give it a little bit longer. But that's the point of it right now. This is the first step. Then we'll go on to making the rolls. So don't peek at it. Don't get excited. Just let it double in size. You can clean up your dishes while you're waiting and then we'll come back and check it when it's doubled. Well, I just checked on the yeast rolls and they have doubled in size. I'll show you what they look like. Some of them have gotten huge in there. So I'm waiting for the oven to preheat to 425. Once it gets in, I'll pop these in the oven for 10 minutes and then I'll come back to you. It's time to taste them. Well, we're done. Beautiful homemade yeast rolls. They smell amazing. Some of them got pretty large. They just came out of the oven. So I'm gonna show you what I like to do when they come out of the oven. I like to take a little chunk of butter, just stick it in a napkin like this, and I just kind of rub it over the top. Gives them a nice, pretty shine. And then, of course it always, who doesn't love butter on a yeast roll. So I'm going to take some of these out so you can see how beautiful they turned out. There's some smaller ones, but they smell unbelievable. Look how easy that was. Look how golden brown they are. And I know what I'm going to be snacking on today. So there you go. It's that simple. Hardly took us any time at all. I hope you'll try this. If you have any questions, you can call me and they'll put a link down below where you can get the recipe. Thanks and happy baking.